Will this one simple modification to your offset smoker help you cook better briskets? For years, top barbecue experts like Aaron Franklin have been telling us to drop our stacks to great level instead of having them way up high on the cook chamber. But a lot of smokers still have their stacks way up high. Are the manufacturers correct or should you take matters into your own hands and lower the stack to great level? That's what we're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Steve Gao here, and in this video, I'm dropping the stack to great level on a small offset smoker as well as a large offset smoker to see if it makes a difference. Why am I doing this, you might ask? Who could possibly influence me sufficiently to learn how to weld, cut up my smoker, and move parts around like Dr. Franken smoke? If you're a longtime Smoke Trails viewer, you've probably guessed that yes, it was Barbecue Jesus himself who delivered unto me this divine inspiration. According to Aaron Franklin's 2015 meat smoking manifesto, he recommends placing the exhaust stack at great level because it pulls airflow more evenly across the meat. Now, it's been eight years since that book came out. Many barbecue experts are recommending this modification, and most of the big, highly respected pit manufacturers have their stack at great level. I'm talking Moberg. So why haven't I lowered my stacks to great level? That's a really good question. A great question, if you will. And that seemingly simple question actually stumped me for literally hours when I was writing the script for this video, but it really boils down to three reasons. The first reason is that I'm autodidactic when it comes to barbecue. That means I'm a self-taught barbecuer. Everything I learned is from YouTube videos, books, and most importantly, personal experience, trial and error. I had to screw up a lot of times before I learned the right way of doing things. And because of that, I feel like I need to see the wrong way of doing things before I actually believe what the experts are telling me. So if Aaron Franklin says something, I need to test it myself. I need to experience it firsthand before I believe it. The second reason is these types of videos are very niche appeal. How many people own an offset smoker with a stack that isn't at great level that wanna make this modification? So this video idea just kept getting pushed further and further down the list. And the third reason is that I finally am at a point in my life where I've learned how to weld. Well, I'm not a great welder, but I have a MIG welder and I can point it at things and stick two chunks of metal together. And I have the tools to cut things and do some metal fabrication. So the timing is right. So for this experiment, the specific claim that I'm testing is the claim that dropping the stack to great level or having it at great level will result in more even airflow over the meat and most importantly it'll create better bark, better fat cap rendering, more even cooking and a juicier brisket. Otherwise why would we be doing any of this at all? Just because you get better airflow or better draw on your smoker or more even cooking temperatures that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to produce better barbecue. So this mod actually has to have some sort of impact on the final product and that's what I'll be looking for. Now I'm starting off off with my smaller offset smoker, my Oklahoma Joe's Highland, I found that I was getting a cold spot on the far left side just below the stack, and this was causing my brisket flats to kind of cook really slowly and unevenly, and I wasn't getting the best fat cap rendering on the flats. So I cut out the stack and I JB welded a piece of metal to it to act kind of like a flange. This was before I got my MIG welder and learned how to weld. Then I drilled holes into the flange and through the smoker body so I could install it with the stack up high in the cook chamber or down low at great level. I cooked a few briskets with the stack in both configurations and I found that yes, having the stack at great level did eliminate the cold spot at the back left of the smoker and I also got better fat cap rendering on my briskets. They cooked a little bit more evenly because that hot air was kind of curling up and around the brisket and getting more to the flat because it had to come up and around to get out the stack. It couldn't just bypass the flat entirely. So the flats over here, the points over here and the heat just went up and over and out the stack but now with the stack at great level, it kind of gets forced back down and it has to hit the top of that flat so we get better rendering more even cooking it does help a little bit that being said the oklahoma joe's highland is notorious for how can i put this low airflow the stack is just much too short and it's also too small in diameter for good draw and dropping it to great level actually reduces that airflow even more so if you're doing this mod make sure you extend the stack vertically as well so you get better airflow and you make up for that lost airflow from dropping it to great level now we're going to move on to the second experiment with my bigger offset smoker to see if the same principles apply but first i'd like to thank chef's temp for sponsoring this video in this video you'll see me using the chef's temp final touch x10 to to temp my briskets to perfection, and that's because it's the thermometer I reach for when I need a fast and accurate reading. The most important thing for an instant read thermometer is speed and accuracy, and the Final Touch X10 has both in spades. It boasts a one second read time with plus or minus 0.5 degrees of accuracy, which is super precise. Additionally, it has a fully rotatable probe design with a backlit display, so I can clearly see what the temperature is, even if it's pitch black outside, which normally it is when I'm cooking brisket into the wee hours of the morning. 
morning. It has a magnet on the back so I can stick it to my smoker or fridge when I'm not using it, and it also has a hold button, which means I can lock in the temperature reading to read it better. That's a feature that a lot of other probes on the market don't have, and it's super useful. An IP67 waterproof rating means I can easily wash it off by submerging it in soapy water, which is important to me because my thermometers are always super greasy and saucy at the end of the day, and I need an easy way to clean them. I highly recommend the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10, and I've used it long enough to confidently recommend it to you as a leading instant read option that's priced very low for the value it provides. So if you need an excellent instant read thermometer or want to gift one to someone over the holidays, click the link in the description section below and use code STBBQ25 to get 25% off your purchase of anything on the Chef's Temp website for the entire holiday season, including the Final Touch X10 and also the Quad X Pro, which is another super useful piece of thermometry I've been using a lot. I used it in this video to monitor the temperatures on my smaller offset smoker and it worked like a charm. With 500 to 1000 feet of range, I'm never getting a dropped connection and I can monitor temperatures accurately on the handheld monitor from anywhere in my house. Again, if you're looking for an excellent instant read thermometer or a remote probe thermometer, use code STBBQ25 for 25% off anything on the Chef's Temp website. Thanks again, Chef's Temp, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to the experiment. So moving on to the bigger smoker, this is a Yoder Chisholm trailer smoker. I call him Big Beefy Luigi. I'm not quite sure what the volume is, but it's bigger than a large backyard offset, but it's smaller than a 250 gallon smoker. So it's probably somewhere between 100 and 200 gallons in volume. It's a great smoker and it has super even temperatures, but that's kind of the problem. To get those super even temperatures, it has a baffle plate system, which results in most, if not all of the heat coming from the bottom up, which is not really good when you're trying to cook briskets. With briskets, we want the heat to come from the top down so we can render that fat cap and get that super dark meteoric bark. For other barbecue, I think this system is really good. It results in really steady, even cooking temperatures throughout the entire cooking surface and on the top rack as well as the bottom rack. So if you're cooking a bunch of pork butts or ribs or other types of barbecue where it doesn't really matter where the heat source is coming from. You're just looking to get some smoke on them and cook them evenly. It's a good smoker. I just don't think it's optimized for cooking good briskets, which is what I'm primarily concerned with. So before we do anything to the stack, that baffle plate has got to go. Unfortunately, that's easier said than done because it's all welded into the smoker body, but I was able to cut the tack welds holding it in place and I removed one panel. I might clean it up and use it as a welding table because it is some nice thick metal. Then I cut out and removed the other panel. Another unfortunate consequence of this baffle system is that you can't clean underneath it so there's a ton of crud built up. Another reason I'm happy it's gone so I can actually keep my smoker clean now. And now that the baffle's gone we can get a baseline test of the stack at its current height which is way up in the cook chamber. All right, here is the baseline test with the stack at normal height, which is up above here, almost at the very top of the cook chamber. So as you guys can see, I have all of my probes set up, every single remote probe thermometer that I have besides the wireless ones. So on this side, we're getting pretty consistent temperatures, 260 at grate level. And the way that's set up is just like this. I've got one over there, one right there, one right there, which corresponds to one, two, three. So as far as the horizontal temperatures are concerned across the grate, we're getting pretty consistent temperatures at 260. And right here, these thermometers correspond to the temperature up here. So I have a probe up here, I have one in the middle, and I have one just over here. And what we have is 350 degrees just over here, just before the air exits the stack. And then we have 390 degrees and we have 400 degrees. So it's much hotter here all along the cook chamber at the top than it is here, about 50 degrees hotter. I don't know why that is. Theoretically, all that hot air should be moving past this temperature sensor and right out the stack, but it's about 50 degrees cooler right where the air exits the stack. So maybe that will come into play later. So over here, we have the grate level temperature that's closer to the firebox. We got 280 and 290 across the grates. So 280, 290, and back over here, we have around 260, 270. So what's that? Maybe a 20 or 30 degree difference from the right side to the left side. Pretty typical for an offset smoker. It's always gonna be hotter near the firebox, but maybe when we drop the stack, those temperatures will even out and we'll see more consistent, steady temperatures. And now that we've looked at all the readings, I'll show you guys where I have all of my probes set up. So those are the great level ones. So back to front, those are kind of displaying the horizontal variance of the heat. And then we have this one, right where the heat exits the stack. Again, 
I don't know why that one is 50 degrees lower than these two. And I have verified this with different probes. I did use a different probe there because I was wondering why it was 50 degrees lower. So then I have my other two probes right here. So one is uh, roughly in the middle of this side of the cook chamber. And then the other one is right in the middle more or less. And then finally, I have the two probes on the right side of the cook chamber at great level. When I'm normally cooking briskets, I'd probably put blocking logs here. So this is probably the furthest that I'd go. So these temperatures are reading the temperatures that I'd use on the right side of the cook chamber. And finally, I'm going to run a biscuit test. I'm just going to put these all throughout the smoker and we'll see how evenly the smoker's cooking from back to front. Predictably, the ones that are closest to the firebox are scorched, they're brown, they're looking pretty dark, especially on the uh, right side there. This one's pretty even, so that tells me that most of the hot air is going up the center of the cook chamber. Ah, they're not quite done yet. Unfortunately, I have to go pick my son up from daycare right now, so I can't wait until these are done, but they're looking pretty good so far, and I'm not really seeing any ones that are burnt. Usually what I expect is there's a bit more burn marks on the side here, closest to the uh, wall. And I think that's what's happening. This looks a little bit more done than the inside. So that's pretty predictable. Nothing wrong there. This one looks pretty good. And yeah, you can see it's getting a little bit burnt on the uh, sides that are closest to the walls because the walls obviously are holding on to more thermal energy. And this one at the very back, I mean, it's not done at all. Now, moving on to the stack modification test, moving it to great level. I'm slicing off the stack with my angle grinder and marking the midpoint of the new opening at great level. I'm now tracing the diameter of the stack opening onto the cook chamber using a piece of cardboard that was traced from the actual stack itself, so I have the exact diameter. And then I'm using my angle grinder to cut out the new opening, which is kind of tough, but it gets the job done. Once it's barely hanging on, I just pop that circle of metal out, and now we have our new stack level opening. Unfortunately, the opening I made was a little bit bigger than the stack by about a quarter inch to a half inch. So I did a welding no-no and I just filled the giant gap with a ton of welding wire. I just kept welding and welding until it filled that gap. It's not pretty, but in my defense, I'm brand new to MIG welding. I did some welding when I was back in the military, but that was stick welding and it was for pretty simple stuff. And you know what? In the end, I can just grind it all down anyway to make it look half decent. It's like that old welding saying, a grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't. Now the grates go back in and we have our great level stack, which is great. I'm saying great a lot. It is a bit higher than I wanted. I think I would have gone maybe an inch lower, but it's good enough. And as for the old stack opening, I just threw the metal cutout piece over top of it and welded it on. Easy peasy. I'll clean it up one day and make it look pretty, but it's fine for now. Okay, let's test this mod out with an actual brisket. To do that, I'm slathering a choice grade brisket with Golden Mountain seasoning sauce and rubbing it with my Smoke Trails barbecue brisket rub. This is the best brisket rub I've ever tasted in my completely biased opinion, but honestly, it's really good. I was a bit hesitant when I first launched it commercially because although I knew it was extremely good and it was based on a lot of trial and error and experiments with different flavors, I didn't know how it was going to be received because I had some kind of weird ingredients in it that people might not be used to. There's sumac in it, there's MSG, there is beef base, there's grilled meat flavor, but I thoroughly tested all those ingredients and I found that I was getting better results than just using salt pepper Lowry's, so I really like this rub. And after I launched it, I was pleasantly surprised by the reception in the community. A lot of people are giving me great reviews on Amazon and saying it's the best brisket rub they've ever tried. So try it out, let me know what you think. It's available on Amazon, I'll link it in the description section below and give me some feedback. If you guys have thoughts on it, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always open to feedback. All right, let's get this brisket on the smoker and see how the great level stack performs. Okay, let's see if this made a difference or if I just wasted a whole bunch of time and energy to do this and it did nothing. So let's look at the first thermometer. Same setup I had yesterday with the higher stack, the stack at the top of the cook chamber. And we're reading 263, 261, 243. So there's a bit of a cold spot over here for some reason, but pretty consistently around 260. That's the same temperature we were running at great level yesterday when I had the stack up top. Now, if we look here, these are the probes that are up in the cook chamber up here, same spot where we had them yesterday. And you can see that it's 309, 361, 340. So a lot lower on average than yesterday. Yesterday we were getting averages of around 380 up to 400. So this is much lower in temperature up here to get the same temperature 
down here. And then over here, we have 241 and 275. So a little bit of a variance, a little bit of a cold spot on the farther side and a warm spot over here, but it's roughly consistent. And I think that we would actually get more consistent temperatures if this stack was a little bit higher. You can see how the smoke is just kind of lazily wafting out of the stack. And that's because the stack is just too short. I need to put an extension on it and raise the stack so we get better draft. And that'll probably give us more consistent temperatures. But the takeaway that I'm finding here is that to get the same temperature at great level that we had with the stack up here, we can actually get a lower temperature up top here. So think of it like we're running the temperature up here. We're getting around 350 degrees on average up top to get a temperature of around 260 at grade level. And yesterday we had to run 400 up top to get a temperature of 260 at grade level. So my theory is that what has happened is we've dropped the convection currents in the cook chamber. They used to be way up here and running up here. So we'd have to get a much higher temperature to get a good consistent temperature at grade level here of 260 than we do now because the convection currents are now much lower because they need to go down and out this stack. So I think what's happening is with the higher stack up in the cook chamber, we are getting the currents going like this, all the way up, 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 and out. And now with the lower stack, they're going more like this. So theoretically, we should be able to cook the brisket more evenly. And to demonstrate that, I have put a brisket in here along with some croissants because they didn't have any more biscuits at the store. So I had to get croissants and we've got this brisket running. I've got my temperature probe set up. So what I'm interested to find out now is if the fat cap is going to render better, if I'm going to have more consistent temperatures, if it's going to cook more evenly, if I'm going to get more heat on the bottom to cook the bottom of the flat more evenly. And in terms of our biscuit test or croissant test, I can see that, um, they're cooking pretty evenly. I mean, they're getting a little burnt on the edges that are closer to the sidewalls, just like the other biscuit test we did, but they look pretty good. Let's check over here. And yeah, just like yesterday, right next to the firebox, these croissants are already done, if not overcooked. I don't even know if I could eat those. And these ones are pretty much consistent with the other ones. They're not quite done yet. They're getting a little bit more heat on the sidewalls and a little bit less done over here but those are cooking really nicely and evenly. So I'm gonna take these off and we'll just keep running this until this brisket is done and then we'll find out what the results are. So the mod appears to be doing something, but what I'm really interested in is the actual effect on the brisket. Is it going to render the fat cap better? Is it going to cook it more evenly? That's what I found out next. So after about 10 hours into the cook, I checked on the brisket and the bark was very dark, as you can see. Much better results than I normally get with this smoker. Much, much better results. And you can see that as I push down into the fat cap, it's just kind of staying down. There's almost no resistance at all. That means the fat cap is getting really well rendered. And it's also cooking quite evenly. It's around 190 in the flat right now and around 195 to 200 in the point. But before with this smoker, it wasn't unusual for me to get 200 in the point. So the point was more than done, but the flat was lagging behind at like 165. So I had to keep cooking and cooking to overcook the point just to get the flat cooked. So this appears to be a big improvement. Now that the brisket is at least 190 everywhere I probe, I'm wrapping it in foil with some tallow and clarified butter and also a bit of seasoning sauce for extra flavor. And then I'm holding it for 18 hours at 150 degrees until the taste test. Now for the moment of truth, is this brisket any better than the briskets that I cooked on the unmodified version of my Yoder trailer smoker? I'm just gonna give this brisket a little bit of a feel test. So I'm going around here. The edges are actually really nice. They're not too crispy. They're pretty soft, so good sign. And the flat is actually, it's pretty soft. Even the meat underneath it, on a lot of the briskets that I cook, sometimes the flat is really dried out and crispy, but this one seems really tender, really good. Over here on the point, this is a little bit dried out over here, but overall pretty good. And if we give this a flop test, this is a really jiggly brisket. I think it's gonna be really good. Now, in terms of the fat cap rendering that I mentioned that I was having issues with on the unmodified version of my Yoder trailer smoker, you can see that I did get really good fat cap rendering. I can push right into this and it doesn't pop up. So this fat is gonna be perfectly rendered, I can already tell. 
On the flat side, maybe the fat is not as well rendered, but that's pretty typical. The flat fat is kind of shielded from the heat on any offset smoker. So I think this modification did fix my problem actually, and I'm gonna tell you why I think that. Here is a representation of the convection currents in an offset smoker. I'm using my kid's Hot Wheel track, or at least a part of it to illustrate it. So let's say we have the firebox end over here and we have the stack up here. So what's happening normally in the unmodified version of my Yoder trailer smoker with the stack up top, I have all the heat coming up and over the brisket. It's probably going more like this in the cook chamber and it's flowing out the stack and there's not a lot of heat getting to the flat. There's a cold spot over here and all the heat is up here. So I'm not getting a lot of good fat cap rendering. And also with that baffle plate, I was getting way too much bottom up heat, which was resulting in the bottom cooking way faster than the top, which is the opposite of what we want for a brisket because we wanna cook it from the top down, render all that fat and have it cook evenly. Now, when I lowered the position of the stack to right about here, so at great level, what happened to the convection currents is it went like this. So it created more of like a rainbow over the brisket where it flew up and over and down and out the stack. And the result of that is that I got higher temperatures at great level and on top of the brisket, rendering that fat cap much darker than I normally get, much better fat cap rendering. And my theory is once I add a collector and most importantly, I extend the stack on my Yoder trailer smoker, what's gonna happen is that increased draw is going to drop that convection current again, lower towards the brisket. So I'll get better even cooking temperatures on the bottom and the top because right now what's happening is I'm really only getting top down cooking, which is why the foil boat is so important. The foil boat holds onto the moisture that is dripping off of the brisket and that retains heat and it cooks the brisket from the bottom up. And then you're getting the hot convection currents cooking from the top down, rendering the fat cap, as well as all that hot liquid cooking from the bottom up. You're retaining moisture, you're getting heat on the bottom and that is what's helping me cook the brisket more evenly but my hope is that I won't have to rely on the foil boat as much if I can drop that convection current lower so I'm getting more heat on the bottom of the brisket because right now I'm not getting very much. But in order to do that, I'm gonna have to extend the stack, but that's for a different video. And just so I don't leave you guys hanging, I'm gonna cut into this brisket and we're gonna see how it turned out. Whew. I could tell this is gonna be a good one already, guys. This is gonna be tasty. Look at that, that is absolutely amazing. This is a choice grade brisket, guys, and that is what the long hold does to choice grade briskets. It makes them turn out perfectly. So you can spend less money and still get a perfect brisket. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. And lowering the stack helped me get that effect and that dark bark. So let's slice some of the point off here. I'll put that to the side for burnt ends. Get another slice here, very tender. Let's take a look at this. Really nice rendered fat cap. That's almost rendered all the way down to the meat. It's looking really good. Let's pull it apart. Ooh, pulling apart perfectly. Oh, guys, I'm excited about this. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That is the best bite of brisket right there. And look at the very tip of the flat. Look at the very tip of the flat. It looks absolutely amazing. It is super juicy. Usually that is dry AF and it's super beef jerky like in texture, but this is just amazingly tender and juicy. This brisket is cooked perfectly. I'm really happy with the modification that I did in this video. If you guys are thinking of dropping the stack on your smoker to great level, then let me know how that goes in the comment section below. And let me know about your experience if you think it improved the quality of your brisket and your barbecue. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any ideas for other experiments you want to see me do, then drop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to do them. And until the next video, happy smoking. I'll be enjoying this brisket. Mm.